The Candidates 2024 is a really exciting tournament. And not just because its winner will fight for the chess crown in a title match with Dean Lejean, but also because of the high level of chess that is played. Top grandmasters from across the world come together, having prepared for many months with their teams using the most powerful chess engines in history. This year, the candidates showcase some really mind-blowing changes that modern chess is undergoing. Let me show you some examples that will impress you. The AI has played a big role in that, and you will see how and why. What's the most important problem for top-level chess? The fact that chess engines have gotten so strong that it is easier than ever to analyze openings using AI and find equality in all lines. So if you usually play objectively the best lines with white that the engine recommends, for example in the Italian opening or in the Rui Lopez, the Spanish, your opponent will obviously be prepared because he uses the same engines. He will know the top lines for white in all popular openings and how to respond to them and equalize with black. Because ultimately, chess is a draw with best play. So, if white just plays logical, sensible moves in some well-researched opening, it's likely that black will play the top engine moves prepared and memorized at home, the pieces will get traded, and the position will fizzle out to a draw. But to win the candidates, you have to win games, especially with white. So what does it mean? It means that you have to go for some weird lines. Objectively, they may even be not the best, according to the computer. They will sometimes be not the first, not the second, and not even the third line of the computer recommendations. But there is one important but. You will be familiar with the position, and your opponent probably will not. You will have studied this position with a top engine for many hours and played training games against your seconds in this position. You will know the best plans, and your opponent will not. He will have to burn much time to figure out how to proceed in the position, and he will be on his own against you, who will be armed to the teeth with stockfish recommendations. Take a look at this position. Here, Jan Nipomnishi playing white against Alireza Firuja, drops back his bishop, bishop to b3, not only sacrificing the pawn on d3, but also allowing black to damage white's pawn structure by taking on f3. Alireza obliges doing both these things. And you know what? It turns out that Alireza wasn't even surprised by that. He knew that line, judging by the time spent by him. Crazy, right? But then Nepo goes for another computer idea, advancing his h-pawn to h4, then to h5, and even to h6. In the post-game interview, he said he didn't remember the exact move order, but remembered that Stockfish suggested this as one of the plans for white. And here, Alireza already didn't know what to play with black. He made some great moves, but he's only human. So in the end, he slipped up, and Jan won an important point. This is the length you should go to today with white to surprise your opponent. There is another side to this coin. As Hikaru Nakamura said, with modern computers, you can play practically any opening and make it work. Even the dubious ones that used to be considered not good. Let's use as an example a game by Hikaru from the first round against Fabiano Caruana. By the way, did you know that I have recently recorded a podcast with Fabi? Check out the link in the description of the video. I also have recorded uh, podcasts with Nepo, Aronian, Dubov, and some other top GMs, but I digress. Take a look at the opening in uh, the game of Fabi versus Hikaru. This position in the Sicilian defense, black to move, has occurred in competitive chess uh, probably hundreds of thousands of times maybe even millions if we count online games as well. In the overwhelming majority of games, black plays pawn a7 to a6 here, protecting against any of the white pieces coming to the b5 square. Instead, the move pawn e7 to e5 has historically been considered just bad for black, because white can give a check on b5 and obtain a steady advantage. However, with modern engines, Hikaru studied this line back and forth and 
found a path to equality. He went e5, surprising his opponent and gaining a lead on time. Soon, the position was equal. At some point later, Hikaru made a mistake and could have gotten into a worse endgame, but Fabi also played not in the best way due to lack of time and they made a draw. Great result if you are playing black against number two in the world, Fabiano Caruana, who is also, by the way, considered one of the best opening specialists in the world. Another example is the third round game between Vidit Gujarati and Pragnananda Ramesh Babu, who was playing black. If you watch my channel, you may know that I love playing the King's Gambit with white, sacrificing my f-pawn, f4. In this game, Prague played something resembling a reversed King's Gambit, a rare Gambit response against the Spanish opening, pawn to f5, called the Schliemann Janisch Gambit. With perfect play, white should get an advantage in this line, although uh, that's uh, balanced uh, by the fact that Prague probably spent many, many hours with the computer navigating all possible lines and felt at home in the position. In reality, Vidit made a mistake already on move 9, the position after that was already equal, then soon it became better for black, and gradually Prague even outplayed Vidit and won the game with black. Just wow! If you are a top GM and you are playing the white pieces and you want a draw, you will generally get a draw. Even if your opponent is 100 rating points higher rated than you. That's what Nijat Abbasov, a GM from Azerbaijan, is showing in these candidates. Nijat is the lowest rated player in the tournament, who got his spot in the candidates surprisingly for many by scoring the fourth place in the World Cup 2023, the greatest success in his chess career. In addition to being objectively the weakest player in the field, he arrived in Toronto with health issues, as he himself said, so in the first several rounds Abbasov tried to play with White as solidly as possible, and no one was able to get a win against him with Black. He just chose the most solid openings, exchanged the pieces and went to an equal endgame. Just look at his game against Hikaru from round 3. He went for the exchange slav and gradually traded all the pieces, going into a dead equal endgame. In such endgames, it's almost impossible to win, like squeezing water out of stone. I think that even I, being a mere candidate master, a noob, <laughs> could have drawn such endgame, even against top jams. Uh, there's just nothing to do here. However, against me, a top player playing black would go for some imbalanced opening with black, like uh, the king's Indian defense, where it's much more difficult to make a draw. But such openings are much riskier for black. Modern computers give a big edge for white in most variations, like plus one. Against me, Hikaru would still play it and destroy me. Against Abbasov, that would be a big risk. If he is well prepared, he can get a comfortable position with advantage for white out of the opening, and Hikaru could even lose this. That's the problem. You either are fine with a draw playing black against a lower rated opponent, or you risk everything, go all in and play the king's Indian. Maybe Abbasov is hoping to score some wins like this. That could be a sensible strategy for him, making opponents risk too much trying to defeat him. Also, Wesley So said in some of his interviews that he has a whole repertoire for making a draw with white. <laughs> he uses it, for example, when he plays knockout uh, games in online tournaments, when he has won the first game and he just needs a draw in the second game to win the match and pass into the next round. Wesley is known as one of the most solid players ever, but you don't need to be Wesley to comfortably draw with white. So, no pun intended, this is convenient and practical for the player in such position, but it's bad for chess, for spectators, for fun, for intrigue. Thankfully, most players in the candidates have come to fight, so most games don't play out like that. But in other tournaments in the modern era of chess, we often see many toothless draws. That's uh, why many top players on my podcast express their wish to switch to Fisher Random Chess, Chess 960, or Freestyle Chess, as it's called today. Magnus himself advocates for this format, and seeing some modern chess games of today, I understand him more. However, 
this candidates tournament shows that there's still a lot potential left in classical chess. Do you agree? Write your opinion in the comments. Bye-bye.